Veldorn, land of monsters. Of old, as late as the last three decades of the 900s DR, the kingdom called Veldorn was a peaceful pastoral land of gnomes, halflings, humans, and many half-folk, half-elves, half-orcs. The gnomes were the most numerous and ruled through regional Harlorn, barons, who served a queen, Hajolta. It was an agricultural land of warm, barley-growing plains with small, boggy vales and a few deeper canyons where springs rose and ponds or small lakes were to be found, and all sorts of fruit were grown, notably pineapples. Wild herds of sheep and goats wandered the foothills of the mountain ranges that rose around the realm. Then, in the reign of Hajalta Marera Hontil, what gnomes call the Storm of Claws and Fangs, fell upon the land without warning. A horde of many sorts of monsters, wyverns, lucrata, manticores, lamia, great numbers of kenkus, hobgoblins, bugbears, and even a dragon or two among them, flooded out of the dragon sword mountains and stormed and took every town and baronial castle. They prowled the land at will, devouring the Veldornans they met, overwhelming the few spear shields, gnome soldiers, the Hajalta was able to send out against them. This flood of monsters appeared because Keldres Urkaladar opened a gate to another world, Harkun, also known as Harkum, and died in doing so, leaving the gate standing open. The monsters flooded through it. Keldres was a granddaughter of the famous Mulhurandi wizard Nazram the Worldwalker. She dwelt in a cavern network within the western face of the northern half of the Dragon Sword Mountains, northeast of the source of the River of Shadows, where she'd been raised by her parents. Her father, Urkhalad, was one of Nezram's children who survived the destruction of the Worldwalker's Tower in 681 DR by the green dragon Chuladdoroth. But with his sorcerer's bride, Contra Hilmdar, they were wed after he helped her fight off slave takers, raiding her hometown of Delgora, made their home in the mountains rather than joining his siblings and kin in founding what would become the village of Nezras. An ambitious, restless experimenter with planar magics, Keldress was a willful woman who hated being told what to do or counseled to prudence, and eventually she paid with her life for this failing. She also inadvertently caused the death of her younger siblings as the monsters from Harkum raged through the caverns as new arrivals from that other world, though now a trickle, not a flood, are still said to do. Soon, all, of, all the Veldornans were dead or fled, and what had been Veldorn was a vast hunting ground, monsters devouring monsters until only the mightiest or most cunning were left. As food became scarce, and starvation set in, handfuls of beholders and vampires began to establish themselves as petty rulers of this or that valley or ruined fortress, compelling obedience by providing food. Over time, largely by tricking and destroying the mightiest beholders with the aid of magically compelled dragons, the vampire Arhim Saidanathar in life, an Imaskari wizard, from the waning days of the Empire of Solon, far better known merely as Sa'id, rose to dominate Veldor and called a moot of the mighty. A tense council of the strongest surviving monsters convened outside the walls of Valen, at which he shared his vision for Veldor, which he told the attendees to embrace or be hunted to extinction. Sa'id privately saw Veldor as his own tiny realm, the city of Valen, surrounded by areas ruled by beast chieftains, whose presence would shield him from any invader. The borders of each hold would be existing main roads that crisscrossed Veldorn and accepted by all. Within them, each chieftain and the creatures they ruled could do as they please, but they were forbidden to attack across the roads or to attack anyone traveling on a road or camped within sight of it so humans and others could travel to and within Veldorn to trade. Any disputes between chieftains would be settled without violence by Sa'id. Though the debate was long and heated, 
Said, in the end, received reluctant agreement by those at the moot, and so Veldorn, the land of monsters, came into being. However, the peace of Veldorn was tested almost right away, and for some years Said and the dragons he commanded were kept very busy destroying this ambitious chieftain and that, until things settled down into an acceptance of his authority, though some beholders always covertly plotted to bring about Said's downfall, notably the twins, Zayok and Vio, who looked identical and dwelt and worked together in never wavering loyalty to each other. No chieftain took territory or tribute from another or raided another's territory more than once. Over 30 chieftains perished under Said's justice, and about the same number were felled by opportunistic rivals from their own territories. To ensure adequate food, traders from elsewhere were encouraged to bring caravans of meals on the hoof in return for gold and the fruit and grains. Veldorn still produced, often farmed, by humans or gnomes who were promised good treatment in return for their services. If you're enjoying this video, leave me a like, subscribe, and if you want to be notified whenever I've got a new video, please hit the bell icon. And if you want a steady stream of Realms lore, join my Patreon, Ed Greenwood on Patreon, and consider becoming a protector of the realms. Your support makes these videos possible. To prevent losses, raids, and disputes, most of these drover caravans of oxen, horses, sheep, goats, and rothe came to the city of Lastar on the edge of Veldorn and there were broken up in great pens and paddocks for sale. This Veldorn lasted for centuries, becoming a haven for lycanthropes and other outcasts from other lands until the coming of the giants. The hill giants and stone giants who dwelt in the caverns of the Giant's Belt Mountains had for centuries been accustomed in the Veldorn of old to raid down out of the mountains to take the wild goats and sheep the Veldornans let roam free in the foothills. The Veldornans had themselves hunted these creatures whenever they grazed too near any settlement or prized cultivated area. These herds were scattered and largely devoured by the monsters now inhabiting Veldorn, and at length, hunger led the giants to go forth and seek them and then to make war on the monsters they met and were attacked by. In Roth, the giants rampaged through Veldorn, battering down fortresses and taking on all who dared stand against them. Beast chieftains and their rule with them were literally battered away, and the waiting beholders saw their chance and combined all of their forces to destroy Said. Conflicting tales are told of his fall, but Veldorn knows him no more. Through happenstance, two drover caravans had just reached Lastar, and the giants shepherded these living meals in great herds back to their mountain homes, departing Veldorn as swiftly as they'd come, leaving what the caravan merchants, who very soon stopped coming as their markets were gone and replaced by wild savagery, dubbed the Beastlands. Within the Beastlands, Kenkus founded their own realm, but few others worked together. The Rakshasas of the Scarlet Jungle decided the time was right and began to roam the Beastlands in small warbands, subjugating the monsters they met. A note about Rakshasas in the realms. These are the same devils in great cat form known in the real world lore of the Indian subcontinent. They were created by a ritual, see the fifth edition monster manual, that freed them from the hierarchy of the Nine Hells. They remain lawful and used to living with each other in a hierarchy, but it is a mistake to think that it is rigid as a real-world caste system, where you are born into a rank or class and can't move during one's life. Rakshasas in the realms kept their adherence to rank for the same reason devils in the Nine Hells do. The discipline prevents endless fighting that would in time destroy the entire race. Just outside Veldorn, Rakshasas under the ru rulership of the Muir, a title translated in the fourth edition Forgotten Realms campaign guide as Raja Tirumala, occupied the city of what became Tirumala and made it their own, and by all reports have striven ever since to increase the territory they dominate and rule. But the Rakshasa so-called tribes in the Beastlands roamed and hunted, 
grooming promising members of the tribe for the Alkant, the joining, and to this day still do. Rakshasas can eat all meat, but prefer human flesh above all. Psychologically, they need to dominate sentient prey, and not just devour such prey, but live among them, manipulating rather than openly dominating. They ache to be in control, but not to be seen to be in control, to be the iron hand in the velvet glove. So Rakshasa tribes prepare their best and brightest to successfully, silently infiltrate human societies and dwell within them in positions of real power, but avoiding having the titles and ranks of official power. Such embedded Rakshasas then choose the victims they will eat with unhurried care, usually in a manner such that the disappearances will go unnoticed. So the Rakshasas of Veldorn today use the resume, resumed caravans to transport disguised Rakshasas forth into the wider realms to live in cities all over Toril. Ironically, the Beastlands became Veldorn once more because these Rakshasa tribes, who call themselves Lalabra, or the, the, the Lalabra in the singular, which means independent or deciding for oneself in Mabra Horing, the tongue of hell, they see the common tongue term of tribes as an insult when applied to themselves, thinking it better fits nomadic savages. So Labrur equals tribe and Lalabra equals tribes, saw the value of trade with a steady stream of human-dominated caravans. They convinced the Kenkus, Beholders, Dragons, Vampires, and other ruling-minded inhabitants of the area to adopt Saeed's old don't attack outlanders on the roads or encamped along the roads rule, and to work together against the expansionistic Rakshasas of Turumala, telling the Mur to turn his attention south into Estagon and leave great Veldorn alone, or Veldorn would crush him. It's not known how the Muir received this suggestion, as he made no reply at all to it, but thus far, he has indeed turned to securing the headwaters of the river Gundan, and then advancing south along it. So Veldorn is once more the land of monsters, under Rakshasa, tribal rule, with locales ruled by Kenku, Blackfeather, amid the Blackfeather barons, and by dragons, beholders, and the occasional vampire or other formidable undead ruler, such as the everlasting worm Dracolich of the Sharawood and the mad ghost of Vulad in Thraldar. There may be other local rulers, but thus far, few adventurers have felt any pressing need to explore Veldorn and catalog them all. Hi, welcome back to Realm Speak, that little segment where we tackle words and names in the realms. And this time around, we're doing this. And this is Chushuru, or Shufuru. This unpronounceable name is the proper name of a chaotic evil dragon who's now a Dracula. She is still alive, and she vastly prefers to be called Shadow Wing. So save yourself a lot of trouble, and don't go up to her sounding like you're trying to down a sneeze and say Shushuru, and just say, Hi, Shadow Wing. You are even more beautiful than they said you were, and you just might escape alive.